Okay. Let's welcome quickly the visitors. If you're here for the first time, or the first time in a long time, please show us your hand, and then we can greet you properly. If you're here for the first time, <clears throat> or the first time in a long time, <clears throat> hallelujah, <clears throat> glory to God. Welcome to Cross Friend Fellowship. Amen. Um, can you adjust my, my mic, please? Thank you. In a month on July 21st and 22nd, we'll have some events here. As Apostle announced uh, last Sunday, um, he has been named US, uh, um, UN ambassador. <laughs> and um, on uh, July 21st, there will be a celebration here uh, actually to, to name him um, UN uh, ambassador at that time. Amen. Amen. As he said, you can call him Dr. Uh, Diallo. He's fine with that too. Amen. Amen. Uh, on July 21st and 22nd, I don't know which one, uh, Pastor Michel will be ordained uh, bishop. And then she's going to be the one overseeing all the churches that we have in Nicaragua. Hallelujah. Cross Friend Fellowship is an apostolic ministry with churches all over the place. That's the reason Apostle is everywhere. Amen. Amen. And today we'll have baptism again Hallelujah. right after service. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The candidates are over here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I would like all the fathers and the fathers to be to stand up, please. Fathers and fathers to be, just stand up. <laughs> Do you see how he's excited over there? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, all the fathers that are here would like to say thank you to the entire congregation for everything you have done this morning to honor us. We appreciate the time, we appreciate everything that the kids were saying as true fathers of Cross Friend Fellowship Church, we're going to put our hands together to thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And all the fathers, happy Father's Day. Amen. You know, you may be seated. <clears throat> it's not easy to be a father nowadays, eh? It's not easy. Sometimes you read the news, or you watch TV, especially social media. My goodness, you, you like nobody, nothing. You go to zero. I'm not sure if you have that impression, but that's the impression I have sometimes. And be a Christian father, that is even more difficult. It's a, it's a battle, constant battle. Hi, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm serious. Some fathers, maybe they're not here, they fight in their own house just for respect. God's given authority in their own house. They fight to be respected. Hallelujah. Amen. At least I have one person who recognized that. <laughs> because he has seen it, he had witnessed it. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Felix. And by the way, the man yesterday, it was amazing. <laughs> eh? We have a new sheriff in town. Hallelujah. The food was good, and I saw many men yesterday, even those who have been members just for one week, they were here yesterday. Amen. Absolutely. Men are rising up. Congratulations. <laughs> All that the fathers need is to be loved. We, we have a heart too, eh? We want to be loved, to be appreciated. That's all we want. And most of the time to be appreciated more than loved. If you can respect us, appreciate us, that's all we need. Hallelujah. Fathers are too much concerned about the security of the kids. 
Some work overtime, two, three jobs. For what? For the son or the daughter to have the new iPhone 10. Do you know? I am serious. I am serious. While your child is on a, a 4G high speed tools, you are still on dialing up. <laughs> hmm? You click enter, go drink water. When you come back, it's not done yet. <laughs> but yet, you work two, three jobs. I know many will do everything they can just so that the kids, you know, they are comparable to other kids at school and everywhere else. Hallelujah. Fathers need just to be appreciated. Fathers, if you have felt that no one can recognize you, no one appreciates what you do, let me tell you this morning, you are important. What you do is very important. What you say is viral. What you say can set the tone for your house. What you say can change even the entire country. Just one word, hallelujah. So don't miss that opportunity to open your mouth and give direction to your family, to your kids, hallelujah. You are important. Fathers, it's your day. So I need a feedback here. Do not minimize who you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we're going to read from first book of Kings, chapter 2. I am going to be as fast as I can because of time. Amen. This is David's instructions to his son uh, Solomon. It says, when David's time to die approached, he gave instructions to Solomon, his son, saying, I am going the way of all the earth as dust to dust. Be strong and prove yourself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord your God. That is, fulfill your obligations to walk in his ways, keep his statutes, his commandments, his precepts, and his testimonies as it's written in the law of Moses, so that you may succeed in everything that you do in wherever you turn, so that the Lord may fulfill his promise concerning me, King David, saying, if your sons are careful regarding their way of life to walk before me in truth with all their heart and mind and with all their soul, you shall now fail to have a man, a descendant, on the throne of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. These were, were the last words of the King uh, David. I know many people here, when your dad is about to die and calls you and say, prove yourself a man, it's war. You, you, he's just sending you to war. Am I right? Yeah. Hallelujah. I need a feedback. David, the, the king, the, the king David instructed Solomon to be a man. I don't know about you, but where I grew up to be a man, that means you, you gotta be a man. But here, the Bible says, showing that you are a godly man is not showing your muscles. It does not mean to have power. It does not mean to, to go to the battle. It does not mean any of that. It is talking about God, your position with God, how to be a godly man. Be a man in the world means all different things. Hallelujah. I remember when I grew up, I heard the Lord be a man. Every time I hear that, man, my, my heart, because... It, Someone wants to fight with me. Be a man, and it's your friend that will say that to you. Because there is a friend who, who wants you dead. And then they say, be a man. Ah, oh, i got to fight again. And I did fight, I did fight. Believe me, I did. I did. You know, at school, 
at that time, I was even ahead. Uh, I started, I think I was five years old. I was already in school. And, uh, but people are not respecting the age. It's not like here, 10 years old, everyone is 10 years old. No, I remember some people were like six, seven years older than me. They were in my class. And then you are going to do what they ask you to do. You have no choice. They want you to go home and they bring the money to do this. And... But I was young and I was physically young too. You see what I mean? So I did not do always what they wanted me to do. Because there is no way I can ask my dad to give me money or bring stuff. No way. So I just choose. <laughs> And then I will say, I'm sorry, um, forget about it. But in a nicer way, okay? N now I can you know, forget about it. But it was not like that, okay? <laughs> Let's to, t to tell the truth. And then they will say, at the end of school, outside of the, the gate, I will be there. <laughs> and then I will say to my friends, uh, okay, but inside of me, I'm boiling. You know, you're crying, and then your tears won't come out. You know, they fall inside. And your friends will say, be a man. <laughs> and at the end of the class, I will give my, uh, my, my backpack to my friends. But I had a weapon. In my backpack, I had a weapon, not a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff, he said, what? No, no, no. I had a baton with a little metal things at the end. And then when I hit, I hit hard. Very hard. And I used the metal one because that one, you can feel it. And then when the class ends, I will forget about being a man. Being a man is not being coward. You don't hide. But I will hide. Hey, you have to be strategic here. <laughs> when everyone is leaving the school, I will be among them, but you will not see me. <laughs> Strategy. Use your brain. And then I will hit first and hold where it hurts the most. One, not two, three. Don't give them the time to hit you back and stuff like that. You may not recover. Just one. And then the blood comes out, and then game over. And then you hear someone yelling, I don't care where I hit, I just hit and I hit hard. And then I rely on my legs. Man, I could run. I just run and I disappear. But anyways, I won. And that's how I got some respect. Hallelujah. Being a man is something different. To be a man is to keep God's word. Do not go fight, please. It's keep God's word. If you teach your kids be a man, be careful. It's keep God's word. Hallelujah. Some people think because I'm married, now I'm, I'm a man. No, you are not. Hallelujah. <laughs> Getting married does not make you a man. Mm -hmm. having money and two BMWs and all these things, they won't make you a man. It's good, though. You can be married. It's fantastic having uh, belongings and the houses. And it's perfect. But it's just an opportunity to show that you are a man. So every opportunity you can, use it to show that you are a man. And a man is a person who can keep God's words. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is... Thank you, it's Father's Day, so, and we're talking about men, you know, you, can be a, you cannot be a father if you are not a male, you see what I mean? So let's go back to the beginning and understand. It's very important. Um, the book of Genesis says um, God created a male and female in his likeness, so we look like God. So if you are here and you are a man, God chose you to be Specifically you to be a man. Amen. There is no mistake. In, it's not like you want to give birth, you didn't check, and then you, you're just expecting. You want a boy, she wants a, a, a girl, and then everyone is waiting to see what will come out. 
And then, no, it's not like that. God knew from the beginning it was a purpose. So if you are a man, you were specifically designed as a, as a man. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible says, male and female, I created. Brothers and sisters, there is no other gender. I say there is no other gender. It is not about what you feel. And on Monday, I feel being like a girl, and then on, on Tuesday, I change my... No, it's not about what you feel. It is designed from the beginning. I know some people, you were born a man, and then you want to change to be a, a, a female. It is not because you cut her off that you become a female. What if you change your mind a month later? Eh? It's already gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. God created, made one person a male, one male, one person, only one, out of dirt. Okay? okay. And everyone else is coming from him. And that man's name is Adam. Okay? One male. And then the woman, the female, came out of Adam. And then all the kids and everyone else came from him. By the time the woman came, uh, everything was in place already. You know, the queen. Everything was in place. And Adam, the worker, was also in place already. And that's the time the queen came. Okay? That's just, it was not a joke, it's true. But Adam was already leading. God created everything and said, okay, you are the boss, you are the leader, and go work. And then the woman came. So by the time the woman came, the man was already a leader. So to make it clear, the woman was made for the man, was created for the man. The woman was brought to the man. Hallelujah. Amen. The women are not saying anything, but that's okay. So, <laughs> the woman was brought to the man, and the man actually named the woman. The man named everything and everyone, including the woman. Hallelujah. Amen. But because of the woman's sin, okay, I, I got to talk about it. <laughs> because of the woman's sin, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 14, God says, God cursed the woman, saying, in pain you will give birth, and the man will rule over you. I know, man, you're not saying anything, but you're saying, thank you, God. <laughs> eh? Thank you. But hold on a second. God said to rule over the woman and to be responsible for her. And God said, because you did not listen to me, because you did not exercise your leadership, I'm cursing the ground. You will work hard to be able to eat every single day of your life. So the man as well, because he did not exercise his leadership, there was a direct consequence. Brothers and sisters, I'm not saying all of this to make you laugh. There is a resp you have a responsibility if you don't exercise your responsibility, there will be a direct consequence each day of your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's the relationship between the man and the woman and all those things. The, God, uh, the man is the leader. That's what God has said. Regardless of the feminist movement and all the things we, 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 we hear left and right, the male hardship will not be removed. It will not going to be removed. It's coming from God. It's permanent. That's it. There is no question. Amen. It's coming from the Bible. Amen. More importantly, if you read Ephesians 5, 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the, the wife, as always Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is sub subject to the Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 
<laughs> in everything. Husbands, love your wives every, every day, all the time. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Therefore, any home where there is a divine order that is contrary to what I just read, if you make your own order, you will go through frustrations because your prayers will be hindered, won't be answered timely. Because you have changed the order of God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is important when you read, you understand, and you apply. You may not be okay with it, but that's the order that we were instructed to follow. The husband is divinely equipped and strategically placed, positioned to be the head. If he's not respected, if he's disregarded, or whatever happens, you just open your door for the, the devil to establish his own kingdom in your own house. It is important. Maybe you work. He doesn't. It's not changing the order that God has given. Hallelujah. So the husband is God-ordained, governing authority in the home. There is a warning. Romans chapter 13, verse 2 says, Whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So that's God talking. Let's be spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. And respect the word of God. I know that many families today struggle because they have brought curse under, uh, on themselves because they disrespect, they disregard the God-ordained authority in the house. The result of that, you are going to labor. You will struggle in vain because you do not respect the man that God put there to be the leader. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if you are a church member and you have problems with the father in your house, you may have kids, but you still have a problem with your father. I know some people, they don't even talk to their fathers. I'm urging you to make it right with your father today without any condition. Regardless of who he is, what he has done, release him, release yourself. Release yourself. You are laboring in vain because you disrespect the authority of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know some, we, we live a time in society where they teach you a lot of different things. Your value is it's your achievement makes your value. If you are a woman and it happens that you are a doctor, you have a lot of diplomas, the, all of a sudden, this poor guy who is your husband, he is just a teacher, you feel that, no, I, 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 I will be a leader. Maybe I'm going to let him lead sometimes. You, you cannot let someone lead. You, you have nothing to give to the other person. He is a leader. He may be a teacher, and you may be a, a lawyer. That's the order of God. That's the way it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you think I'm wrong, then something is wrong with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can choose your own order. That's your problem. If you operate that way, you are operating out of divine order. Yes. Hallelujah. You are of order. <laughs> women, women, God called you, equipped you, and empowered you to be helper. Hallelujah. In the Hebrew language, helper means Ezra. And actually, this word is used to talk about God, to qualify God. There is a verse in Psalm 115 verse 9, that says that the word God is helper. Do you see the, um, the, the rank of a helper? Do you? 
So if you believe helper is something inferior, you are totally wrong. The true meaning of helper is equal partner, appropriate match. Hallelujah. Can I hear equal partners here? Eh? Appropriate match. Good fit. That's what God says. So helper is not something just to minimize you, to belittle you. No. If it's in your mind, just open, and then I'm going to wipe that out right now. It's important you understand from the word of God. Hallelujah. So you understand that the, the, the helper, Eve, came to, to be a complementary to Adam, who was incomplete. The Bible used the word incomplete. When the woman came, now you become complete. Hallelujah. Amen. So my point here for my sisters, you just have to understand the difference between helping and ruling over. Hallelujah. Amen. Both are different. So let me talk to fathers now. Coming back to um, the first book of King. So when King David was sick and was about to die, one of his sons rebelled. We didn't read that because there, there is a lot of, lot of things to read. And he proclaimed himself king. Just, I like history, so let, let's go back quickly to the history. So here is the, the great King David about to die. Okay? He had many sons, up to 20. One of them, Adonisha, proclaimed himself king. Because the dad is dying anyways, so let me take the power. He did not talk to the dad. He knew who should be the king, but he proclaimed himself king. He found a couple of people, and then they started now um, uh, celebrating the new kingdom. At that time, Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, she heard what Adonisha, or whatever his name is, was doing. He went to see the king, King David. He said, okay, I know you're dying. Okay, fine. But there is another, another king over there. Your son is the old son. Adonisha. How come? And then the mother said, okay, you promised that Solomon will be king after you. So anoint him then. Brothers and sisters, this guy was dying. Dying. When a man is not dead completely, he has the full authority that was given to him by God Almighty. He just said, okay, Solomon, from today on, you will be the king. And show that you are a man. Hallelujah. I know in the history, the first act of Solomon was to kill Adonisha. But that, that, that's something different, okay? This has nothing to do with showing that you are a man. I have explained what being a man means. Hallelujah. So that's the way that the king Solomon was anointed, and he became king, and he built um, the temple. Hallelujah. Amen. This act, two, three seconds, or days before dying, shows that the power of a father is still full until he gives the last breath. If dad is not dead, dad is still dad. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible says he was old. Actually, he was not really old. He was around 70 years old, right? But he was sick. The Bible said his body could not keep the heat. They even went to look for a young, beautiful girl, you know, to heat him up. But it did not work. It did not work. So, fathers, if you are here and your body can still keep the heat, use that opportunity to talk to your sons and daughters. Because what you have to say is important. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Your kids, I know things are difficult. 
Because you're coming from another generation, maybe you were born overseas or whatever, and your kids were born here, you're not speaking always the same language. When you're talking to them, they may not understand what you're saying because they used to learn from phones and all these tools they have. They may probably think that what you have to say is not important. They may think you're coming from the old class. Oh, it's your duty to talk anyways, let that talk. Regardless of what your kids think, you have been given the authority from above. What you have to say is very important. Here is a dad who is dying, he has no power, he cannot even keep the heat, amen? And then we have a new king in town who is actually celebrating But his word, his one word, put an end to that celebration immediately. Hallelujah. Fathers, you have power. Exercise your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be clear today. If you do not say something to your kids for them to learn what is important to you, amen, it is not the worldwide web that will teach them that a male is a man. Am I right? They're going to learn whatever from the web. So you, what you believe is important to tell your kids, do it, say it. Because your definition of a, a man is different from what you read. Amen. The definition of success is something different. It's having a big house, big car. Amen. Amen. The King David was rich. Am I right? Now, from what we have read, have you heard anything saying, oh, you know, I have tons of gold, I have 3,000 cows. Did you even hear anything talking about material? This is the last word of a dad. What your last word will be? Hmm? I have a house somewhere in Juba. No. What your last word will be? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your success is not because you, you, you probably own a house in Kinkora or you have an acreage in Chestmere. The, the success, biblically, cannot be measured that way. Having a house in Kinkora is good. Eh? You can buy acreages in Chestmere. It's good. It's good. But let's focus on what is important. Amen. Good and important are two different things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True success comes from your relationship with God. A good relationship with God. Can I hear someone say hallelujah? That's a true success. So right now, I am looking at successful men and women. Right here. Your BMW will come. But what is important is your, a good relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King David said to to his son Solomon, walk in the way of God. Be obedient to the word of God. Because the word of God will direct you. Eh? CNN will not direct you. WWW, whatever, will not direct you. They will give you ideas, instructions. They can lead you to do crazy things too. Right? But the word of God... The Bible says in Psalm 119, uh, um, chapter 119, verse 105, the word of God is a lamp to your feet. The thing that will direct you is not what you read left and right. It's all good, but it's the word of God that will direct you. Hallelujah. 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 God is saying, my word is truth. And my word gives life. Everything as you read sometimes can be true, sometimes is not true. But one thing is for sure, it cannot give you life. So a good relationship with God will give you life. That's the reason the Bible says, seek God first. And everything else will be given unto you later. Hallelujah. This morning I'm saying, seek God first. If you seek God first, I declare that grace will be chasing you. Because you seek God first, 
abundance will say, me too, I'm coming. Hallelujah. Favor as well will kick in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep that in mind. It's God first and everything else that you need will give, be given unto you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The temperature is a little, a little high. Hallelujah. It's because of the message. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Fathers, as long as you have breath, you have power. You have the responsibility and you have the authority that was given to you by God Almighty. As I said before, exercise your authority to speak to empower, to anoint your kids, hallelujah. If you do that, hallelujah, Amen. what you say will impact their life. What you say will change everything they were about to do. Amen. What we say can change a country. But you have to lead by the example. Do not say something you don't do. You know, my son drives me sometimes, and then I think he does not like it. Because I watch everything. I watch the speed. I watch, the, I watch everything. As a result, I don't get tickets. You know? I have many fingers and tickets I have ever received in my life. On one hand. I don't. But last, last week, I got pulled over. <laughs> Although I respect everything, the most I drive fast, I drive to the limit. Sometimes I go over, but it happens, right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm really, I, I carefully watch everything I do. I use cruise control at, at every time, just because I don't like to see those lights behind me. But last week, <laughs> it turned yellow, and then I said, yeah, I can still go. And then I went. And then before I know, Someone else did the same thing too. And then I said, hmm. For me, it was yellow, for sure, I think. But this guy, it was red. <laughs> and then I saw the light. The guy who was on red actually was a policeman. <laughs> and I stopped. I removed my driver's license. Uh, you know, hey, hey, I'm at fault. What can I do? So he came to me. You know, and then I was surprised because they take an amount of time to check you out before coming. But he came to me right away. And then he said to me, Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, Yes. It was yellow. I had time to stop, honestly. I, make, I made a stupid mistake. I, it was a wrong decision, so. He said, sir, I, I really appreciate your honesty. So just don't do it next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Honesty. $350 back in my pocket. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Teach your kids honesty. Tell them what you do. I wouldn't tell my son to respect the speed and everything if I don't do it. I always do. And it's, not the, it's the second time I'm pulled over, and I just tell them exactly what happened. And then they say, sir, have a good day. So that's what you guys have to do too. Yeah? First of all, yellow light, it's not green light. Green light means go. Yellow light does not mean go. That means stop. Right? Red, red you, you cannot even move your car, okay? But yellow, when you see yellow, you stop. Unless it's turning yellow you, <laughs> when it's already too late or it's slippery and stuff like that. If I'm wrong, we have a sheriff in the house. He can correct me. But next time you see yellow, just stop. The guy behind you won't be happy. It doesn't matter. He could be a policeman. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So quickly here, let's talk about what a leader is. The first thing that is important for me, a leader has to pay his tithe. Amen. 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 I see and I hear a few amens. If you're struggling with tithing, 
Okay? If you cannot give, so you haven't settled the issue of who you belong to. If you really belong to God, you heard the message from Pastor Dolores here. You can go read the Bible for yourself. Malachi chapter 3 is, it, it even says if you don't give, you're robbing from God. Hallelujah. A person who does not tithe is a person who is not focusing on God. It's probably a person who is even living in sin. Let's say it the way it is. I don't care what you think or what your neighbor thinks about tithing. I don't care what people say on social media. Some people who have never been anointed as a representative of God will go there and will describe, will come with the verses you are wondering where they're coming from. The word of God is not something you can change. You may disagree. It may be painful sometimes. But as a leader in your house, you have no choice. That's what you have to do. And that's what you have to do for your, your, your kids. If you do not do that, that means you have a trust issue. You do not trust God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I do understand that many people won't understand that. They are just natural men. They think naturally, and they will never understand the things of God. They will be foolish for them. So if you are a man of God, you understand what I'm talking about. A leader is a man of prayer. If you are a leader in your house, you have to lead prayer. You have to lead prayer. Intercession is not only for women. I was glad to see uh, the young Strong lion on Tuesday leading intercession. Eh? You could not stop him. I'm not saying women should not pray. I'm talking about a home. Don't go watch TV when your wife is praying. Maybe you should be the one praying and calling everyone for prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. So you, you're worrying too much. You're scratching your head. What my family is going to eat tomorrow, what is going to happen tomorrow, stop all of that. Trust God. Amen. Amen. God is saying, hey, I feed even birds. I feed all the animals. They have no brain to, to know how to work. But I feed them all every single day. So trust me, hallelujah. Amen. Trust God, hallelujah. Amen. Tomorrow, live tomorrow, take care of itself. Amen? Amen? And then be a man of prayer. God is saying that where there was no bakery, he fed thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yes. That is what God is saying to today. So, man, work and work too much is fine. But you cannot sacrifice your relationship with God because your kids are looking up to you. Praying is very important, so stop worrying, but pray. Hallelujah. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. On that note, last Wednesday, we were here praying for this amazing woman who was teaching on Wednesday, Heidi. Oh, you all know that the parents are sick. Both were diagnosed with cancer. Pretty much at the same time. We heard her on Wednesday. She came to teach on Wednesday. Parents are in Edmonton, but because it was a commitment, she was here teaching on Wednesday. Hallelujah. And she shared. M most of us were really happy with how Wednesday went. And on Saturday, who was teaching the man? The husband, Jeff. You understand the commitment. You understand the relationship with God. On Wednesday here, we prayed. I don't know who came up with that prayer. We prayed for um, the dad who was going, the entire family was sick, to have a good people looking after them. Remember that? Yes. I got a call from her yesterday saying, this is unbelievable, but the doctor, her name is Anna Borowick, who was the doctor for the dad, said, okay, you know what? Because your mom is sick too, I'm going to ask your mom to be transferred here. I will take all the files from the other uh, surgeon, right? And actually, 
I will do everything so that in this room, they remove other people, they bring your dad and your mom. So you do not have to go there and then go here and then go here and then go there again. And on top of that, I will look after both. Hallelujah. That was our prayer on Wednesday. We did not know to what extent that will go. We just prayed for good people to look after their parents. That was on Wednesday, and on Saturday, it was done deal. There is power in your prayer. Those who were here on Wednesday, you will remember that. So I pray for this doctor that God continue, God invade her completely and direct her hands. She will do things directly commanded by God. And I pray as well that God listens to her own prayers because she probably has some prayers, has some issues, doesn't know where to turn to. I pray that she meets God and God fulfill what she's praying for. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the life of Heidi's parents and um, Dr. Anna Borowick. Hallelujah. Don't neglect prayer. Prayer is powerful. Not even two days. I know we prayed for a complete healing. We prayed for a a release from pain. It is coming. It is on the agenda. And I believe it will happen. Hallelujah. Women, thank you. Some women don't understand men because some of them, they educate themselves from Oprah, you know, Ellen, you know. <laughs> they are very good people, though. They say good things. They are very successful. I have nothing against them. Hallelujah. But it's probably time to take a distance from magazines and then, you know, rely more on the Word of God. Listening, amen. I know some people, I mean, if it's time for Oprah, it's, it's Oprah's time. I understand all of that, amen, but rely more on the word of God. Yeah. All the magazine teaching you five things you need to know to, for a great man, and forget about all of that. Just yeah. read the Bible. Yeah. Come here on Wednesday. Yeah. Come on Tuesday. Come on on Friday, hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's the only way to understand. We have to learn from God. We are different. Women and men are different, completely. Women, sometimes they they talk in in circles. I'm not saying you you just say things without any meaning. No, it's because if you want to say about this, you start by this one here. And then th- this one here, you're circling, you're zeroing in to where you want to go. But us men, we are impatient. When you say this, I start responding. But I'm responding to the wrong question, providing the wrong answer, because I'm not addressing the issue. The issue is not what she's saying. The issue is somewhere else. So let's understand each other. I found myself in trouble with my wife because she will be telling me things. I learned to listen. But if I'm silent, it means I'm not interested. It will take her time to get to the point. If I start responding to the first thing she's saying, I'm in trouble. If I don't say anything, I'm in trouble. It's very complicated. (laughs) It takes time for the man to understand the point because it takes time to the woman to get to the point. (laughs) You know, it's okay to tell your husband, I need $700 to go buy a a cat spade uh, bag, Gucci bag. Just go to the point and the husband will say yes or no. And then we're done. We save time. We save all the struggles. 
Go to the point. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Women, do not compare your husband to other people too. Yes, hmm? I have my rest. I was equipped for my rest. Yes. If you compare me to Mr. Ojo here, he was equipped for his own rest. Yes. That's the reason he's able to buy a BMW yes. and I cannot. If you wanted the BMW, do not compare me to him. Maybe you should work a, a little more so we can afford it. So, some women are very insecure. You know? You have a good husband who is earning good money. Automatically, you become like, I don't know. You, you're calling him at work all the time. Yeah, okay. It's 9 a.m. I was home at 7 a.m. Why are you calling me? Hmm? And then when she hears some other voices, she's asking, who are, cool down. I'm at work, you know, we have people here. You know, those are my colleagues. It's serious. Some women are very controlling. Very controlling, insecurity. So how can you lead in this situation? When you want to raise your voice, ah. <laughs> wait when you get home. They ignore you now. I am serious, and if you're laughing, do you know I'm true? I'm saying the, the truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Women, I love you so much. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let me talk to the children. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Children, obey your parents as God's representative in all things. For this attitude of respect and obedience is well-pleasing to the Lord and will bring you God's promised blessings. Brothers and sisters, honor your father. If you still have a father, honor them. It's a position. It's a function they do. I don't care if your dad is a loser or he was not able to study or he never owned anything. He's uneducated, whatever. He is your dad. He's your dad. That's it. Honor them. Honor them. If you don't honor them, it's your choice. You'll not live longer. The Bible is clear. It's not me who is making that up. It's very important. The father, if it's like the root of a tree, if you curse the root and you are somewhere there, you lives, right? You cursing the, tr the, the root. You cursing the entire thing. It's not going to take time to get to you. Anyways. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given you. So there is no other secret if you're here. You may be a father yourself, but you have neglected your parents. I am saying honor them. That's it. Honor the position, honor the person, regardless of what they do or what they have done in the past. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God chose them to be your parents. I know some parents, they will say, oh, he was a mistake. There is no, there is no mistake. There is no mistake. Why this couple that is waiting for a first son or a first child after being married for 10 years are not making that, those kind of mistakes? Eh? And you, you having kids? And then you're saying it's their mistakes. There is no mistake anywhere. Otherwise, everyone can make those mistakes too. Do you realize that some couples don't have kids? And then when you have one, you're saying this is a mistake. It's not a mistake. You, probably you are a mistake. <laughs> but not the kids. Eh? Because God chose them. God knew them by name. And then chose you to be the vehicle. Eh? God could choose somebody else. So there is no mistake here. You might be a mistake, maybe, but the child is not a mistake. Amen. 
So kids, there is no accident here. They didn't ha now have you by accident. Even if they said it, it's by ignorance, okay? You have to honor them. The best gift you can give to your dad is to honor them. Hallelujah. It, it, it's, you, if you take the Ten Commandments, it's right there. It's important. One of the ten things that God found was important. Honor your parents. Respect your parents. Very important. So as I said before, if you have been in some sort of conflict with your parents, they are dumb, they don't understand me. Do the right thing Amen. for you and for generations to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Children, stop focusing on what your earthly father is able to do or is not able to do. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, and we know that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Your earthly father is just a vehicle that God used to have you. Hallelujah. So stop asking God, why was I born in this family why don't we have this? Why don't you have that? All those are stupid questions. God knows. You are the one who, you don't get it. God knows, hallelujah. Amen. God knows, hallelujah. Amen. Hey, he knows the end. He knows the beginning from the end. So he knows. Amen? Amen. Everything is under control. God is on control, Hallelujah. I understand you may have been rejected, you know. You got raised in a dysfunctional family. Parents were on drugs. You know, they used to drink a lot and they even abused you. Uh, and all those things look unfair. And then you may say, God, what happened to me? I'm here to tell you the truth. God has plans for you. And God's plans are to prosper you. It's very clear, so don't use anything that your dad is or is not as an excuse for you to be the person you are. There is no excuse, hallelujah. You may look like you, you were a failure, things are unjust for you, difficult, uh, and you want to settle for mediocr mediocrity. I'm here to tell you, forget the past, forget what has happened to you, turn the page, your dad abused you, call him, say him how much you love him, make peace with him. If he does not apologize to you, that's his problem. Remember unforgiveness is a poison you drink, hoping that your dad who abused you will die. Your dad is not going to die. You will surely die. Yeah. Hallelujah. So release yourself. Stop drinking poison. Call him. Say, Dad, I'm not here to talk about the past. Right? I just want to acknowledge that you're my dad. Things have happened, but I love you as a dad. Amen. I want to do my part. If he does not want to do his part, that is his problem. That's, right. That's the way it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Honor them so you will live longer, despite what they have done, despite who they are. Hallelujah. If you do that, you will see more opportunities, more fulfillment coming your way. Hallelujah. Amen. Some kids are ashamed because uh, parents, uh, pff, whatever, you know, they didn't study, they don't know nothing, and, and whatever. At your graduation, you didn't even call your dad. The dad did not even know that you were going to graduate. And I'm talking about something that I know. I know it happens. You get married, your parents did not even know. They had no clue because you don't want to talk to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Check your last name on the diploma. <laughs> Who, whose name is there? <laughs> hmm? Whose name is on the diploma? <laughs> you do that to me, I take my name back. <laughs> Give it back. It's mine. You don't want me? You don't want me? To? Give my name back. Hallelujah. 
the relationship between uh, children and father is not only the name. It's a lot of things. Be very careful. Even if your dad is homeless, go get him uh, cleaned and then find a nice shirt for him. Go to the graduation with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Do that. This lady who just got married, Marco, uh, yeah, your sister, eh? <laughs> the dad was nowhere to be seen. They did not even know where the dad lives. She said, I'm going to walk down the aisle with my dad. You remember that? It's just the dad who kind of, you know, was maybe sick. I don't know. I don't want to go into that. But she did the right thing. She did what she needed to do. This is a kingdom with kings and whatever. Guess what? My dad is coming too. My dad is walking me down the aisle. Hallelujah. Honor your dad so you live longer. Hallelujah. My dad is poor, so what? Give him some money then. <laughs> I know some of you had no dad because the dad, you know, was dead before even you were born. Some of you, the dad left, you know, and you don't know who your dad is. I understand. Kenneth said here, God is a God of fatherless. Amen. So you may not have a physical dad, but God is your dad. Hallelujah. Amen. You probably don't know, don't know, but I'm a foster dad. I open my house to the kids that the government brings to me because they have no dad. Because they, are, they got abused somewhere. So I have had so many kids in my house. Some of them, you see them here. Hallelujah. They don't have any dad, thank you. They don't have any dad, but now they have me. Hallelujah. Very important. When the government is able to fix the problem in their house, or when they have found a relative who is okay, they bring the child to them. That's what they tried to do with one of them. Unfortunately, the child said, no, I'm going nowhere. This is my house. This is my house. I'm going nowhere. If you bring me by force, I know the way back home. I will come back home here. The child refused to go live with his parents because he wanted to live with us. Yeah. Hey, he eats fufu. Yeah. Hey, he knows all the food that I can even eat them very well. Because I gave him the best I have. Hallelujah. God is God of fatherless. You have no that. Don't worry. He will take care of you. He will find people, different color, different nationality, different language, to take care of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father or fatherless, that's God. He will cause people, that's the word I, I love the most. He will cause people to love you. He will cause people to give you when you didn't have. You have to rely on the right person and that's the person is able to cause everything else to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So my point is trust God. So if you obey the word of God, if you're here and you say what you're saying is ministering to me, I guarantee you that God will open doors that you'll never know you'll be able to open yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. He will cause people to come to you and to do the right thing. Fathers, be an example for your children. Amen. Hallelujah. We heard the example of Minister Joseph here when he got into the city from Nigeria. First act, he brought kids downtown where you can find homeless. He said, these people sleep outside. Take a look at them. He brought them again where... Prominent people are, businesses and stuff. 
And then he said to the kids, you choose who you want to be. You can be this one or that one. You make the choice. It is not a coincidence that his daughter, your daughter, was first in everything. All the subjects at school. You don't know where it's coming from. It's probably coming from the word and the actions you just said. Word. You didn't, have, you didn't have a button, you know, every day, do your homework, do your homework. But one word you said went straight to their heart and stayed there and is directing them until today. Being a father is being a leader. Being a father is being the head. But sometimes it's our concept of headship that is a little, a little complicated. Hallelujah. I have to jump to the end quickly here. I know in some cultures um, there is different, a lot of things. Sometimes you don't know where they're coming from. You will see in some cultures that I do like, uh, girls and, and actually women, they, they, they won't face you. They won't look into your eyes. They won't uh, talk to you equal. They will kneel down. When they want to say hi, they kneel down. I mean down on the ground. Uh, sometimes you don't understand. Um, but if you are wrong-minded, if you have your own concept of leader in the house, you may think they have become slave. You expect them to, to be on the ground when you're talking to me. Do you understand the problem? So some culture can be good, depending on the time and the circumstances. But there could be confusion as well. Hallelujah. So if you're here and you're listening to me, and you probably know what I'm talking about, and probably agree with what I'm saying, so I proclaim that the days of confusion between culture and, and slavery are over. The word of God, culture is good, as long as you respect the word of God. But if some people are confused and they become slavery, I'm putting an end to that. Amen. If you're here under this ministry, you will not be confused, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All the ungodly way of thinking and doing, I, I, I put an end to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Your descendant will be godly minded. Hallelujah. I have to jump to the end here because of all the events we had. Amen. Keep in mind that regardless of the age of your dad, the way you treat your own dad is probably the way your kids will treat you. It's important to know that what you say to your kids can impact them negatively all the days of their life, and then they may pass that down to the generations to come. So take this opportunity to say the good thing to your kids because it's coming from God, and that is something that will continue with them. What do you think Minister Joseph's kids will tell their own kids? What do you think they will say? They will say what they heard from him because he shaped their life. Hallelujah. Amen. For the people who have been abused by their parents. I'm not trying to minimize the role of the parents. Maybe they were abused as well themselves. You cannot give something you don't have. They are giving you what they have. In their mind, they are giving you the right thing. And maybe that is not a good thing for you. I understand that. You lost opportunities, you lost everything, but God will restore them back to you. I say God will restore them to you. Everything you lost because you didn't have good parents will be restored back to you. Hallelujah. I commend the full restoration. Full restoration. I understand that the people you loved Neglect you, abandoned you, abused you. Let me say it, you will be an overcomer. Amen. Those things will not take over you. 
You will be an overcomer in this world that is difficult. You will be more than a conqueror. Your past will not define your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all the fathers that have chosen to follow Jesus and obey his word, I declare that you will eat the fruit of your love and the fruit of your commitment to the word of God. Your reward in heaven will be a great reward. Hallelujah. Amen. Will be a great reward. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to end uh, right now. We're going to just stand up and uh, pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dear Lord, we thank you and we glorify your holy name, Lord. Thank you for this word. Now we understand what being a man is, Lord. We were wrong, fighting left and right, showing our muscles and failing to connect with you, failing to love you, failing to pursue you, Lord. Now we have understood and we thank you for that, Lord. For all the fathers that are here, Lord, Maybe then they have never received a good education from their own parents, Lord. Maybe their parents are not even Christian, Lord. But you have taken control of them, Lord. You are guiding them the right way, Lord. Make everything they have been praying for come to pass, hallelujah. Everything, hallelujah. Everything will be fulfilled by your word and your word alone, Lord. You know the heaviness of this world on their shoulders, Lord. You know some work two or three jobs, Lord, to be able to pay the mortgage, to be able to, to feed their own kids, Lord. Hallelujah. You are a God of multiplication. You see what they are going through day in, day out, hallelujah. I am calling for your grace and your favor upon their lives, hallelujah. For those who want to change job and have a better job, better pay, do it in the name of Jesus, sir. I pray for a better job, a better pay. Hallelujah. Make the atmosphere in the house be an atmosphere that reverence you, Lord. Be the center of their life and remove the kingdom of the devil in their life in the name of Jesus. Establish your kingdom completely, completely in all areas. Make leaders of this house be the leaders in the house as well. They will lead prayer. They will lead everything. Make them to think like a godly man, to act like a godly man, to talk like a godly man. Whatever they say, Lord, will set the tone for their kids, for generations and the generations to come. Hallelujah. Be their God. Be the center of their life. Hallelujah. All the fathers that are here are blessed are blessed to know God, are blessed to follow God's principles, and they will be blessed outside. Those are the people who will change this city because they are changing the life of the community. They will change this world, hallelujah. I praise your holy name for being in our life, for being our God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, sir. In the name of Jesus, sir. Hallelujah.